What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and a lot of you have seen this video coming from a mile away. And ever since uh, Case Lab stopped making the, uh, their cases, it became even more obvious that I was gonna be doing something with Skunk Works. Well, here it is. We are going to be upgrading this. We're doing a first part of it right now where we're gonna be upgrading the motherboard, the processor, the block. We're gonna be changing out one of the reservoir tubes. We'll talk about that why. We're gonna flush the system. And we're gonna be obviously upgrading the CPU to a 7960X, 16 core, 32 thread processor from Intel on X299. It's currently an X99 6950X, no slouch, with two Titan X Pascals in there, not Titan X P's, but Titan X Pascal. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna be doing a few things today. We're gonna get the motherboard in, the processor, the block, we're gonna flush the system, and then we're gonna prepare it for its final phase of the upgrade. I'm sure you guys can figure out what that's gonna be. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN and protecting your internet experience is more important than ever. We conduct our entire lives online these days, online banking, online shopping, online communication, and you don't want people spying on that, let alone your ISPs with the ongoing litigation between net neutrality. Now NordVPN has more than 4,000 servers in over 60 countries, including areas like the Middle East, Africa, Europe, you name it, you can connect safe and secure. And the best thing is it works on your mobile devices as well. So stay protected wherever you go with NordVPN. And right now you can save 66% on a two year membership by using offer code JS2Cents or clicking the link in the description below. So this is EK's new water block for the CPU. This is the EK Velocity RGB. As you can see, the packaging is even different. Um, so it's, it's an improved design and improved flow. It's better for the higher core count CPUs. That's obviously something that's changed quite a bit over time is the higher core count, which means they've had to sort of improve their block designs. It's a little bit bigger, as you can see now, and of course it has RGB, very nice uh, see-through top plate on there. Because we're gonna be going with new water blocks, of, obviously for the graphics cards, which are uh, gonna be clearly 2080 Ti RTX cards, because Skunk Works has always been a centerpiece of the channel, designed to be impractical, overpriced, and uh, really a lot like me. You know, you probably pay too much for uh, watching my content, even free is way overcharged. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of loud and I'm sort of unnecessary. So I'm going with the X299 For The Win K from EVGA. I, they still are my favorite brand of motherboard because they're simple, they work, the BIOS are solid. Ever since they kind of revamped their motherboard team all the way back to Z77, uh, they have just been extremely solid. This one actually has RGB and stuff on it so we can spice up our build a little bit. I didn't go with the dark because the dark is meant for extreme high-end overclocking, uh, just a bit, I know I, I said this build is supposed to be overkill, but it's a bit overkill for this build and to be honest, the gold wouldn't go with our theme very well. So that's why we ended up going with this. I currently have an X99 classified in here, which has been more than solid for me over the last uh, several years I've been running this build. And so I figured I'm going to stick with what has worked for me and that's exactly what we're using here. All this time that I've been showing you guys how one of the loops always looks a little bit darker than the other, uh, that, that was a true issue obviously with the yellow and the orange. I mean, it turned brown, straight up fluid color change. But all of that uh, fluid color change over time has slightly tinted the right tube. And the way we figured that out was the last video that we did, go and watch it if you haven't, where we checked this fluid having been two years old and we saw that nothing was clogging anywhere. We mixed both, yeah. we mixed both loops, to, I almost knocked it over, let's crack it before we even get into there. I mixed both loops together in the same jug and then poured them independently back into their loops and saw that the right loop was slightly darker again, which was impossible considering it hadn't even run yet. So that got me to thinking that that tube is tinted ever so slightly. So we're gonna be putting in a brand new acrylic tube in there and that should be that. So one thing we're gonna have to deal with here is this pass-through fitting is not gonna line up with my cards anymore. Because NVLink is wider than SLI, this block right here has to scoot back slightly on the new cards. In fact, I even had to shave, I don't know if you can see it, I had to actually shave off a corner of the NVIDIA bridge because it didn't work with the EK water blocks because it hit because it was more pointy. So I actually flattened out those edges right there. So that means I have to figure out something when the cards get here on how to straighten that up. So when I do, when we do that, that's gonna be mostly just putting on the new graphics cards with water blocks, everything else will already be in there and then figuring out this bend. I'm really praying that the CPU location on this motherboard and the new motherboard are exactly the same or I will have to rebend this tube. And uh, this one will be easy, it's just a single 
90. But these double 90s, man, are those a pain in the butt. So I might have to redo this tube at the most. So what do you say we just go ahead and do it old school style where we just vlog it, not vlog it, but uh, montage it. But there'll be much better montages than the ones I used to do because of course we've got frickin' Phil here running the show. doesn't look so bad. I mean, did it in the first try. What do you expect? I am a professional. Okay, we got the new motherboard in, of course, the EVGA uh, X299 for the win K. We've got my new 7960X 16 core CPU in there. We've got the new Velocity RGB water block that's on there. We actually had to come up with a custom RGB solution for that, and we'll show you how we did it in the next video because um, that's a RGB block and this motherboard, although it has RGB on its own little covers, it doesn't have a single header on the motherboard designed for 12 volt or addressable or any of that. So we had to actually scramble to figure out how we were gonna light up both of my graphics card blocks and my CPU block, but we figured it out. I'm also gonna be putting UV lighting in here. So I'm gonna be sticking with the green, bright UV green that, sh that glows in the dark. I love the way UV green looks. Remember we did it on my D-frame build. So yeah, our loop as you can see is Redone, we had to do that bend again. Uh, two bends had to be redone. I ended up using this double rotary swivel footing here. I just like the way it looks more abstract and that's because of the design on the motherboard. I just felt like I wanted to add up something in there a little bit less clean, a little bit more against the grain, but just enough to be different but not really trigger OCD. Doesn't bother me at all. And that's what matters most, obviously, with it being my build. Now, both the loops right now are filled with distilled water and they're running the Primo Chill Sys Prep in there, which is cleaning out any of the stuck uh, gunk that could be built up in the radiators. And they have a slight green tinge to them because, like I said, it's been running pastel for over two years. It's very unlikely that uh, it's ever gonna turn completely clear, but we're going back with green, so that's a, that doesn't matter. You know, in the beginning of this video, how I mentioned the right reservoir tube we think was tinted a little bit? That's a brand new tube, and as you can see, it still looks slightly darker than the one on the left. So we're thinking it's just the way the lighting is with the fans being next to it and the fans being black. Um, we just think it's casting a bit of a shadow onto it, which is why it always looks darker. So I'm just gonna leave that be. I've got this soft tube here because that's just the way we're completing this connection so I can flush out this radiator down here. But what's most important, obviously, is we get these radiators nice and clean and prepared for their next, uh, obviously their next round of gaming and stuff. I might take this build back home again. I miss it. I look at the D-frame at home and I'm like, this build is cool, but it's not Skunk Works. So anyway, so in the next part of this video, we're obviously going to cover the uh, two GPUs, any changes we have to make with that and lighting, and then it will be pretty much done. A pretty easy upgrade this time around. So guys, thanks for watching. Let me know uh, what you think. And yeah, it's one of these older, oldie but goodies. It's a very, very clean, very minimalistic build but I like it. I've been talking to Phil about maybe taking all the external panels and painting them just a slightly darker shade of gunmetal so there's a bit of a two-tone going with that. And I think it'll look really good. The nice thing is if I paint this though, um, I should be able to strip the paint off, not too, too difficult because this is powder coating. I could always get it stripped and re-powder coated in another color if I wanted to do that. But uh, again, things we can figure out 
later on. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, shit. Ow. Had to get my stuff. System preps. Woo, woo. And you're pregnant.